Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. This is the show where we talk about movies, TV shows, comic books, Batmans, the Batmans. Uh, and with me as I'm DJ Woldridge. I'm your host, DJ Woldridge, lest we forget. And with me, as always, is Roxy Stryer. And today, we have a very special guest. Adam, say hi to the kids. Hello. <laughs> I just you made me think about, I love that we uh, gave Christian Bale so much shit for his Batman voice. And there were parts of this movie, I was like, I, it, it's a, it just happens, I think. It's, it's, just, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Like it's you inevitable, can't escape it. It's just you start, if you're a British actor playing Batman, so your voice is going to start li- listing in that direction. Um, yeah, Adam, pretty for, much. The, for the kids that don't know you, introduce yourself. Let them know uh, who you are, where they can find you. Uh, I'm one of these people on the internet who likes to talk about movies and superheroes. I have a YouTube channel called Heroes Reforged with two of my very, very good friends, Augustine and Hector. We talk about uh, brand new shows. We review movies. We'll talk. We'll be talking about the Batman on there as well. We have a podcast called The Chexicans, and uh, we've been doing that for very many years at this point. But we've just jumped around to so many different channels. Um, but I am very excited to talk about this movie that we've been waiting like four years for. Yeah, like, and, and it's crazy to think that we got like our first trailer like two years ago. Um, wild, Roxy. How are you doing today? I'm excited to talk the Batman. <laughs> So excited for the Batman! I'm vengeance. I'm vengeance. It's fun. and we all saw it at different points. Adam, you literally just saw it. Roxy saw it like three weeks mm-hmm. ago. Uh, yeah. and so we're we're gonna dive into it. But before we do any of that, let's uh, a little business up top. Of course, if you want to watch this show live, if you want the full discussion, if you want uh, extra shows like what we're into, where Roxy and I talk about the stuff we're not able to talk about in this show, or Spider-Versity, where my pal Sal and I talk about all the Spider-Man movies, we just did Venom, um, you can do that over at patreon.com slash onlystupidanswers. You can review this show on iTunes, please and thank you. Five stars, we love it. I'll read anything you write as long as you give us five stars. And if you listen to this on Spotify, every week we ask you a question Last week's question is, what is your favorite video game movie? Um, Tevin Davis said, my favorite video game movie is Werewolf Within. It's a game I played on VR, but the movie made everything better. Clue plus werewolves equals amazing. That does sound amazing. I was vaguely aware of that movie. Did not know it was based on a video game at all. Um, And then Raisa Marie said, my fave would probably have to be Detective Pikachu. It's not perfect, but seeing all my favorite Pokemon on screen and not look terrible was pretty rad. I would actually go as far to say is that the Pokemon in that movie looked pretty good actually i think as a visual as a former visual effects artist those pokemon look amazing pokemon look really cool and it's just one of those that like yeah that's this is all you need it's a kid that grew up playing pokemon it's like yeah i just want to live in this world i don't really care what's going on in this movie i just feel like i'm in a world where pokemon exists and that's pretty fucking cool yeah they did a really good job there's like some videos i've seen where they do a lot of breakdowns of like just color matching and just making them feel like they really exist in the world i'm like this is really really well done well and then the tricky aspect of not only making them feel like they exist in the real world but not making them look like disgusting gross th- like because it's like if you just literally translate a pokemon in the yeah. real world it's like oh that's actually kind of a nightmare so yeah. you have to you have to it has to be just enough just heightened enough you're like oh no still cute and love it yeah exactly what is werewolf within so so i saw i a good question roxy i wasn't sure i saw uh i looked it up after i saw this post and i've seen posters for it so i was only tangentially aware that the movie existed um and had literally zero idea it was a video game had no idea at all but then in the like the imdb description it's like based on the video i'm like oh shit not only is there a movie i never knew existed it's based on a video game i never knew existed (laughs) Is anybody in it? Yeah, obviously it's, somebody's in it. Yeah, but is there any name people? I want to say there were a few names I recognize. Let me see if I can bring it up. The Adam, the girl from this? the AT&T commercials is in it. Which good for her because she's actually a pretty good actress. And so I, I think I may have actually seen a trailer for this movie. Someone may have sent it to me. I may have seen oh, the trailer. Oh, it's Sam Richardson. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, people are in it. It's like it's a real movie. You know what I mean? Like so it's not just it's it's so it's weird that I don't know more about it. Huh. Yeah. There's a lot of those movies out there that are like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how did I not know about this? But anyway, <laughs> we'll we'll have to watch it now. Thank you, Tevin. So uh, let's uh, before we dive into Batman, that's going to be spoilers. That's what our episode is going to be about today is the Batman. But before we do that, we did get a bit of news today that I want to discuss, which is uh, the Marvel Netflix shows Daredevil, uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, the 
Iron Fish, Iron <laughs> Fist, uh, the Punisher, and the Defenders are all moving to Hulu. No, no, they're going to Disney Plus. And I like that the 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 press announcement was like they're going to Disney Plus, and we're updating our parental advice controls. <laughs> um, because because I don't know about you all, but when when it's like okay, they're leaving Netflix, I'm like, well, Hulu, because they're not they're not going to Disney Plus. That's crazy. And uh, so I saw the announcement. I'm like, this is this is just why, just because I never thought Disney. Like, like for context, it's not like nobody says fuck on these shows and there's no, there's no nips, you know what I mean? So it's not exactly the most hard R rated thing, but like Kingpin mm-hmm. decapitates within the first few episodes of the first season of Daredevil, we get a guy that jams his head through a spike and we get Kingpin de- beheading a guy with a car door. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and then, and then in season two Punisher, like the whole prison fight where he just shanks a billion everyone. people. <laughs> What, Roxy, what, what, what do you think properties about has Disney acquired from Fox that are on Disney Plus? Because none. I feel like this. What'd you say? I think none, other than like kid stuff. But like the X Men movies are on there, right? Like Days of Future Past yeah. is on there. But those are all PG thirteen. Like Logan's not on there. Deadpool's not on there. No oh. Alien. No Predator movies. None of that stuff. That'd be wild. <laughs> That'd be Why amazing. isn't Logan on there? Because R, but I guess now, but see, that's the thing is that theoretically yeah, this could open the could. floodgates to, to see Deadpool is even wild. There's a pegging joke in Deadpool. That's crazy. That's even crazier <laughs> to me than even Logan. Deadpool on Disney plus. That would be a real move. Yeah. What the hell? Well, Roxy. So what do you think about this? I, I think it's, uh, first of all, I grew up in like the most hippy dippy household of all time where I started watching our movies when I was five. So mm-hmm. I don't, I have very little, uh, especially for especially for things that are like because of sex or drugs or anything like that I have very little um love for censorship the only thing that i do think is legit is violence and that's what these shows are Mm -hmm. and so I i think that that is interesting however it is absolutely on parents and on guardians to be in charge of what their children especially under the age of 12 are watching. And I'm saying that as a non-parent. So I'm sure some parents are like, go fuck yourself. You don't know how hard it is. And I'm sure it's an absolute terror, but it's still on you guys. You decided to pop out the kids. So you, or however Mm -hmm. you have kids. And so you have to make sure they're watching. If you don't find that appropriate, that's on you. And I don't Mm -hmm. think Disney plus it'd be crazy for us to be like, well, Disney plus is just for kids. In the same way that it'd be like Netflix is just for people who want to order DVDs. Guess what? Shit changes. Yeah. That's that's one hundred percent true. I just I think it's it's surprising in that it felt like it was heavily branding itself as like an all family thing. And of course, people have been pointing out. Uh, I think it's called Star in Europe. Like that's part yeah. of the Disney Plus app. That's like more adult content. Um, it just, it felt like that was a way that, and I guess it doesn't need to now, but I felt like that was a, that was mm. Disney's way as a way of distinguishing itself from the Netflix of the mm-hmm. world. But now that it's straight up competing with it, I guess it, it doesn't feel that, that pressure anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also like, I don't know if you're going to absorb all of these like Fox properties and some of that includes literally titles from the Marvel universe yeah. to have Logan be on Hulu, but then Wolverine and all the other X-Men movies on Disney plus. That's just so weird. Like why should I have to jump to a different platform to watch the continuation yeah. of the story of the same character? Like that never made sense to me at all. And I think they're also, I could be wrong, but I think they're working with Sony on trying to get the Spider-Man movies to Disney plus as well in the future. That so makes sense. it seems like they're really trying I mean, then this is just speaking from, you know, for what I see for Marvel, they're trying to really just try to get all of their properties on one in one place. So people don't have to jump around and try to find them in 10 different places. So I think putting all those Netflix shows on Disney plus makes total sense. I am very surprised that they did it though, because of the nature of those shows. Like, yeah, they're not super sexual, but they do get pretty violent. But like Roxy was saying, cause I also, I also grew up in a household like I saw RoboCop when I was six, oh, Terminator so when I was good. six. It's so good. <laughs> uh, seeing people's arms get blown off is like nothing new to me. I saw Halloween when I was so, you know, but that's why I think they added that thing of like, we're adding parental controls. Mm-hmm. It's on the parents now to like make sure that their Disney Plus is set up the right way so their kids can't access it. Or if you can access it, set it up the right way. So I like it. I think that Disney Plus 
cannot be a platform just for kids forever. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. I think it just limits what kind of content you can put on there. Yeah. And at some point, like, would it be absolutely insane to see something like alien and predator on there? I don't think it'll happen. I think that stuff will stay on Hulu, but to have the flexibility to kind of expand out, like I'm hoping that blade is a future film, in the MCU that is a little bit more gory and violent and goes a little bit darker. You're going to have to be able to have some flexibility on Disney plus to put that on there. And if you can't do that, well then like, I don't know. I feel like it, it again, it's very limiting to what you can do. Well, and it's also worth noting. I, I will say that, that, um, I know Kevin Feige was doing the rounds for Mood Night, and he's like, "This is going to be brutal." I'm like, "Ah, bullshit!" And then these shows went on there, like, it's "Oh, be maybe." He, he, Kevin Feige was saying Moon Knight was going to be brutal, uh, and I was like, "Ah, not likely." And then these shows came to Disney, I was like, "Well, maybe now." Um, and then it is also worth mentioning that U.S. Agent decapitates a dude in uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier with the, with yeah. the Captain America shield. Uh, no, it's interesting uh, just because we're talking about households. I grew up in I grew up in a more conservative household, so my my parents my parents were like, "Hey, uh, like." Rated R's for 17 and older. Are you 17? Well, then you're not seeing it. Uh, the environment I grew up in, uh, a more Southern Christian environment, a lot of my friends were like, well, it, it's R, but it's only R for violence, as if that was uh, that was better. Um, so that's who these Netflix shows were for, those kids. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it'll be. I just love the the image in my brain of some seven year old that like had a had a fun time seeing uh, Matt Murdock and Spider Man No Way Home, and and just goes into Daredevil blissfully Oops. ignorant. <laughs> Ay-yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, we've yeah, got a but quick. It's not theirs to go into. They've got to ask permission or have some kind of thing set with their parents. And I get that kids get around that, but like. The- this, I think it's always been so strange. Why are we trying to keep them from watching Jessica Jones? Um, I no, I would argue, especially because because um, uh, especially Jessica Jones with its uh, uh, discussion on on sexual assault and stuff like that. I think it it behooves adults to figure out how they want to talk to kids on those terms, like how they want to talk to their specific child. Absolutely, uh, on those but things it exists. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, but I don't necessarily world. want Jessica Jones to be the one that teaches them about it. <laughs> I don't know. I learned about sexual assault from a uh, uh, soap opera when I was five years old yeah. and i remember i went and asked my parents about it what i heard one of the characters say that she was raped i had no idea what that was you go and ask your parents and your parents have a conversation with you if you have good parents mm-hmm. and i i would hope that a lot of people have parents who are willing to have conversations with them whether it's about her drinking whether it's about assault whatever it's about i i'm just really i i think if kids are interested in things i'm again not a parent so mm-hmm. i'm not telling kids parents how to advise their kids if you don't want your kids seeing the stuff block them from seeing it mm-hmm. but if you are okay with your kids watching things then you have to be willing to have conversations with them about it mm-hmm. uh, we have a question here from jake hefner do you think the netflix shows coming to disney plus means we could ever see them revived or at least more of the characters brought over i want to see mike coulter back in the mcu mm-hmm. uh i mean is this a sp- i don't know if this is a spoiler but Daredevil's in She-Hulk, so Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. Yeah. I feel like the, I feel like the internet's talked about it to death, but I think they're going to continue having these characters show up in other movies, other TV shows. I think if you are bringing in those shows, you kind of are inheriting the actors that come with it, especially if you put Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio in Hawkeye and in Spider-Man. Why would you not bring back Kristen Ritter, Mike Coulter? Um, I forget the actor uh, who plays Iron Fist. Oh, I wonder why. I uh, wonder why. Finn Jones. Finn Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jessica Henwick. And well, it's especially <laughs> Jessica Henwick because she was offered a role in Shang-Chi. Yeah. She turned it down to do The Matrix, but also she said, I think, that in part it was in hopes that her character, character would be able to come back And also, future. listen, I didn't really like Matrix Resurrections, but also I think that was the right, you get the opportunity to be in a Matrix movie with Keanu Reeves. Uh, yeah, take that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the one you do. No offense to Shang-Chi. I enjoyed it, but yeah. you take the Matrix with Keanu yeah. Reeves. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I do think that those characters do have a future. And I think if they haven't had conversations with them already, I think just seeing Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio back, those actors are probably like, okay, well, there's there's some light at the end of the tunnel for us. Yeah, it becomes a little bit trickier because we have poached a few of the Luke Cage actors to appear in other in other roles and other movies. <laughs> Who's playing Blade again? Oh, yeah, right. oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Cottonmouth. Um, Roxy, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think about the possibility of these characters being resurrected, these shows being resurrected? 
I think these decisions are always made business wise, not creatively. And and if you look at the business of these actors right now and what they're doing, I think that many of them are able to do the show right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that uh, points to a positive direction for us fans. It's nice when those two things align, when what we want to happen in our nerd dumbs and what the business of it all states. And right now it's not, I, to the best of my knowledge, Mike, Finn, um, Kristen and Charlie are not in big franchises that are not allowing them to come shoot this or mm -hmm. they're not, you know, remember right afterwards when, when we were wondering what was going to happen with the Netflix shows and, and everybody was like, Oh, well, they're never going to be able to do another thing because Mike Coulter is going to, is booking this thing and he's going to be the one who can't, but it seems to me looking at their slates that they're all, anybody that they want to pull from, they would be able to, and guess what? Disney has the money to do it. So yeah. The only one that I think would be tricky is I think Mike Coulter is still on that show evil, um, which was last I saw was doing like, cbs episodes so like 24 episodes a season kind of a thing uh so i don't know i think there were, it moved i think it might have moved to paramount plus or something like that i'm not sure totally, so maybe he won't be in, we might not do a, a luke cage season three yeah, yeah but he might appear in something yeah. yeah that would be cool that um i also think if we could if we could find a happy medium between what the netflix shows were doing and what the current disney plus shows are doing i think we could have like perfect marvel shows like like the the one of the things that didn't work for me on the netflix shows is they were like 13 episodes and almost none of those seasons needed to be that long like they just didn't have the material to to uh uh support that and all the disney plus showed no, like they're six episodes some of them are like 30 minutes um mm -hmm. um uh, but they also the Netflix shows also had more traditional showrunner writer structure, and I think the Marvel mm -hmm. shows could benefit uh, from that a little bit. Um, it so is kind of strange that the I thought that the Disney shows were great. I I think that they've done a good job with them, and as I've been watching them, I'm like, oh, these are they're doing a really great job with the Disney Plus shows. However, then you compare them to Punisher, Daredevil, and Jessica Jones. Uh, specifically for me and yeah. i'm like they, they don't even hold a candle for me yeah yeah and it's one of those like like oh man if you could do a tonally daredevil a daredevil tonally similar to the netflix daredevil but like six episodes like mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds appealing yeah i that was kind of my thing with wandavision was it started out like they were really going to try to lean into horror or like david lynch that yeah. sort of feeling and then by the end of the season it was like Oh, it feels just like a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> you lost me a little bit. Well, and that's one, one of the reasons why I think they would benefit from a more traditional um, showrunner. Right, like, uh, I understand Kevin Feige is the showrunner of all of it. But like, if they <laughs> if they allowed these shows to have a more traditional like showrunner writer's room, mm. I, I've, I've, I don't think there's a, been a, one of these Marvel shows that I didn't enjoy. But I also don't think there's one that on some level didn't kind of at least a little bit fall apart by the last episode where it's like, mm. okay, well, what are yeah. we, what are we kind of doing now? And so yeah. I think maybe if you let them work more like actual shows, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that might be, but it'll be interesting to see. I, I do think, uh, it, I, I, if I were Kevin Feige, I'd be a little, um, nervous. I, I don't know if anything would make him nervous at this point, but a little bit nervous about doing a, like a daredevil season four, mm -hmm. because if it's not exactly like the first, the first three, three seasons. seasons of daredevil yeah. you're gonna have a riot on your hands and it's one of those and looking at um i enjoyed hawkeye i enjoyed vincent d'onofrio and hawkeye but if you look at tonally the it's a very di it's a very different tone mm -hmm. with the character and it's like well that if you do the same thing with the shows itself fans might have a problem with that do you think it's a possibility that they're gonna do it do do one of them i think maybe daredevil i think it's more likely with the rest of them that they'll just pop up in other things Mm -hmm. like like you were saying uh daredevil and she hulk i've also heard rumors that jessica jones could show up in she hulk which makes a lot of sense tonally um uh oh right yeah yeah and uh, but i think i think a full-on revival to me seems uh, other than a daredevil just because it feels like every day i go on twitter there's some sort of fan cry uh, outcry for more daredevil um other than that one seems like we could get a disney plus show other than that i i would be pleasantly surprised you know going forward i hope that marvel studios is willing and i feel like we're getting little bits and pieces of it here and there i want to see them embrace more horror 
and maybe a little bit be more adult friendly. I know that's like a weird term, but like no. we're going to talk about Batman and Batman very much is like, this is not a kid's movie. Yeah. Like by any stretch of the imagination, could kids see it? Sure. If your parents don't care, then totally fine. Yeah. Um, but it's not targeted generally. specifically towards younger. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, when is Marvel Studios going to do something like that? And yeah. Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness feels like it could be kind of the first step towards that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but maybe. Um, I like would love to see them just just go for it, fully go for it and make it feel like the universe is kind of evolving with the audience that's grown up with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. And the, um, uh, before we move forward to talk about Batman, we're going to do spoiler free first, especially for those watching live. Don't worry, spoiler free. And then we're going to go into spoilers. Um, before we do that, we're going to do a quick ad break you guys get to join me on a very special ad because in my last hell button campaign contributors could contribute to having an ad on the show and this is one of those ads this is from contributor tim watts thank you tim for contributing to hellbent and let's talk about your comic be one of the first people to pledge your support for the post-apocalyptic graphic novel the director kevin smith calls amazing i watched the video with kevin smith is in tim's kickstarter video it's pretty cool um creator tim watts former co-host of the podcast post a podcalypse great podcast name has taken his years of experience examining the genre and crafted a story that is best described as post-apocalyptic game of thrones but with a less controversial ending set centuries after the destruction of civilization the republic follows a group that has been rebuilding in the ruins of a major city for decades and are just beginning to feel a measure of safety but that feeling is short-lived when they hear that a large nomadic tribe with a ruthless reputation is moving into their territory can they be reasoned with or will this conflict only be settled with blood it will take everything the republic has to defend the home they've worked so hard to build the kickstarter for the republic launches on march 1st so it is live now and if you go to the republic novel.com uh, you can learn more you can go back it you can go support it it looks super cool check it out don't wait to reserve your copy the republic will only be available for a limited time so go to the republic novel.com check it out and thank you tim for backing hellbent and being a contributor uh it looks like your campaign is already funded but let's get it up there go get yourself a copy and go support that and now we are back to talk about the batman and of course just for those in case anybody hasn't seen it yet what are you doing get out there uh uh but let's keep it spoiler free we're going to do some spoiler free thoughts and then we're going to answer some discord questions roxy let's start with you the batman yeah. spoiler free thoughts I thought it was good. I thought it was good. I, I, I'm so nervous to step in it with this movie because I feel like if I'm not going to pull out the red carpet and, and put on a dance and say, this was the greatest. Mm -hmm. but I thought it was a really good, solid movie that looked really, really freaking good. Yeah. I walked out of the, the movie and my first words were, wow, that was cool. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Yeah. And that's what I said. That was cool. It was... I thought it was cool. I thought it was a cool, cool movie. I know I could phrase this a lot better, but that in general, that's how I felt. I thought that there were some really cool performances. I think that there were some things that I wanted to see that we didn't see. There were some things I didn't know that I wanted to see that I loved seeing. Yeah. And that it was definitely different. Mm -hmm. And that was cool. What about you, Adam? Spoiler free thoughts. Um. I was really excited going into this movie because I'm a big fan of Matt Reeves and the whole crew that he assembled for it. Like I'm a huge Greg Fraser fan and Michael Giacchino fan. And I was really excited about the cast. And when the movie started, I was immediately just kind of like surprised by the visual look of the movie. And I don't feel like this is a spoiler, but the movie definitely gave me vibes of like Batman, the animated series and the first Tim Burton Batman movie. And that kind of lasted throughout the whole thing. And when I walked out of it or when the credits rolled, <clears throat> yeah, I had a really, 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 really good time with this movie. I know the immediate question that people always ask is like, is it the greatest Batman movie ever made? I'm like, I don't know. Like, let me think about it for more than 15 <laughs> seconds, please. Um, but I, I really enjoyed the movie. And I, a lot of the things that I had wanted from a Batman movie are in this. So there is that like fan, Batman fan in me who was really happy to see a lot of that stuff. So I really enjoyed it for that. I thought it was a really, really nice start to a reboot of Batman. And of course, there's always that part of me that's like, 
It's another reboot. It's not connected to anything. It's a little frustrating, but I thought the movie on its own was really solid. Yeah, it's interesting. It's it's um I think I think I really agree with with both of you. I know I was talking to my friend yesterday who's a big Batman fan. I uh, hadn't seen it yet. Kind of like saw the first trailer 2 years ago and hasn't seen anything that was going on cold, so he had, you know, he asked you but I was excited so I, you know, kept spoiler free but but the one thing I would share is like so it's it's kind of like good news and bad news. Good news, I really liked it. Bad news, it's three hours long. And the 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 um and that's not necessarily in and of itself inherently bad, but it's a three for me at least, it's a three hour you feel it. You feel the like um you feel that point where like this is where this movie feels like it should be wrapping up, but don't worry, there's another hour to go. Um because I've seen some some backlash online where it's like, oh, grow up, the three hours, grow your expenses, attention span. It's like I don't think it's a an attention span thing. I think it's a this movie doesn't this particular story doesn't need that type of run time like if you look at the going into it they were comparing to movies like seven and silence of the lambs which are like all-time classics and i do see the dna of those movies in this movie and both of those movies one of them an oscar winner uh were two hours you know what i mean so it's like you could you could do that Mm. that said within that critique i do think there's like a perfect batman movie in, there's a perfect two hour Batman movie in this three hour Batman movie. Like there's moments that I'm like, oh God, damn. and we'll get into the spoilers, but there's one specific sequence. I'm like, fuck, that was perfect. That was just a perfect fucking sequence. I love the, what you did there. Um, like you were saying, Roxy, I think the performances across the board are really solid. Um, as a fan of the comics, there's specific storylines that I, I didn't think we'd ever see get incorporated into a movie like this. That was really cool to see. Um, and, it definitely felt to me like you were saying, Adam, that whether this is the best or not, and I think we're kind of at a point, I think one of these questions touches on this where it's, that's kind of a a person to person question. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the experience I've had reading a Batman comic or watching Batman, the animated series or playing the Arkham games, this Mm -hmm. was the closest, like Tim Burton and Christopher Nolan took the, Batman, the concept of Batman, and said, I'm going to do my own thing with that. And they made all-time great movies. This is the, this is the closest where it's like, they just took the thing that I grew up with and made it a, a live-action movie. They yeah. took that and made it, they just did the thing. It's almost like a really high-budget fan film that you're like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and it's one of those, and 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 I for me, I don't think the Dark Knight's crown is in question. It's still, for me, the all-time best live-action Batman film. Um, but there's, there are elements of this that is like, oh, it's really cool, um, uh, that I may have enjoyed more, but let's get to some of these mm-hmm. questions. Um, touching on some of the stuff we were talking about, Leonard Kim asks with so many iterations of the Batman on the big screen, what do you seek in your ideal Batman or Bruce Wayne? I'm asking out of curiosity, but I'm also from a place of ignorance since I've never read the comics. All I know is bat flick is my favorite. Also, how close does Battinson come to your ideal Batman and Bruce Wayne? So we're, we're what is the ideal Batman or Bruce Wayne? Roxy, you've been DC moving newsing forever. You've yeah. probably talked about the Batman a few times. <laughs> do you have like yeah. a, what do you look for in like your ideal Batman slash Bruce Wayne? Uh, well, first of all, I do, I do appreciate a balance in those two characters. Mm-hmm. A balance that just the amount of time they were on the screen without getting into too much spoilers, we didn't really have as much in this movie. No, Bruce Wayne and Batman are functionally the same person in this movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, and and I do like that juxtaposition, typically. Yeah. I really want to see... And it's okay to have that juxtaposition be different. Like, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this being Nirvana slash emo Batman. And yeah. uh, when when we say that, I actually think it's so funny because the amount of people who, when I tweeted that this was emo Nirvana Batman, I meant the movie, and people were like, are you a fucking idiot? Do you know that Nirvana's not emo music? Nirvana's <laughs> grunge? And I was like, this is so good. I'm so glad. Oh, this God. Is yeah, cool. The internet's working. No notes on the internet. <laughs> uh, I was so excited. I was just like, right, right. Yeah. Uh, I'm just like, it's both. Not, not Nirvana's both. The movie's both. Mm-hmm. He's emo Batman. There's a lot of Nirvana. Yeah. That's just my, that's my interpretation. But it's, I'm okay with a lot of different iterations of Batman and Bruce Wayne, but I do like that strong contrast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I really do try to look for that because in, in the same way that people for years have dicked on the fact that 
Superman is just Clark with glasses and it's like, oh, what? Mm -hmm. That's the absolute opposite for Batman. Yeah. Batman and Bruce are nothing alike. Yeah. And and I really love seeing that. And I, I like to see I like to see a a a Bruce Wayne who's a a little bit of a a, a little jerky, mm -hmm. a little playboy, a little bit uh, a little rich boy you know it's a little spoiled and then i like to see a batman who is i don't mind whatever their their word is whether it's vengeance or wh whatever it is but a, a driven batman a, yeah. a dedicated mm -hmm. to the cause batman well it is interesting because as you talk about that it, it, you look at the previous batmen and it's like yeah you look at the michael keaton christian bale and ben affleck it's like, yeah, Bruce Wayne's where those actors actually get to play. Like, like it's clear that that's Bruce Wayne is the appears to be the more fun ver part of the character to play. Mm -hmm. So I will say this with Robert Pattinson. I think this is probably the most interesting Batman himself has been outside of Bruce Wayne because we don't he never really Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne just barely comes out of the shadow of, of Batman, mm -hmm. even when he's not wearing the cow. Um but his Batman is interesting. Uh, Adam, what, are, what for you, I, ideal Bruce Wayne slash Batman? I think it was done perfectly in a little show called Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, I, I was, think I was, I was, when we were driving home, I was, I was talking to my wife and I was like, yeah, when I read comics, it's Kevin Conroy's voice yeah. I hear. And his, the difference between his Batman and Bruce Wayne is perfect in, in the defense of every other Batman. He is a voice actor. Yeah, <laughs> so, of course. Yeah, anyway, but I think cool. even the way the character was written, you know, he's like, and and I think Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne has this ability. That's what I think is kind of like the genius of it being year two. Yeah, he hasn't really fully formulated all of his identities, right? Yeah, like at a certain point, he will kind. I would imagine he will become a Bruce Wayne who's more philanthropic, who's a little bit more about the city. He's a little mm -hmm. bit more outward, and he's not such a recluse. And I think that's what I love about spoiler Batman. free still, right? Spoiler free. That wasn't a spoiler, was it? No, we're just no, okay, I'm, just, good. <laughs> I, I'm just chiming in as I felt the direction that that was going. <laughs> um, but and that's what I love about Batman the animated series is that the personas are so different that I feel like it's a he does such a good job of masking his identity that no one would potentially ever consider him being Batman. Yeah. And I think some of the movies have kind of played with that a little bit. I think Christian Bale's Batman or Bruce Wayne was so far removed from being like a philanthropic kind of guy but you know that was like a third persona almost mm -hmm. like him kind of being just this like guy who didn't really give a damn about anything yeah. um so I, yeah but i think at the end of the day animated series really did kind of like the best job also because it had so many you know it had so many seasons and episodes to do it to really build out Bruce Wayne as being almost this like kind of iconic figure of Gotham city, who was all about the people and all about, you know, giving Yeah. while at the same time, he kind of did the same thing as Batman, just with a completely different personality and feeling that I thought was really cool. So that's what kind of what I hope to see more of in the future. Yeah. So, um, going still spoiler free uh, question from Jake Hafner. Do you think this iteration of Batman, we could ever see Dick Grayson or Bar Barbara Gordon, or would they not fit in this universe? I really want to see another go at the bat family. That isn't Schumacher. Adam, let's start with you. Do you think we could see a Robin or a Batgirl in this version? of? The I don't understand why Warner brothers and all these directors are constantly not trying to make a bat family. <laughs> like it's such yeah. an expansive universe. And like, I don't think you have to make Robin a 10 year old kid. Like yeah. he doesn't have to be 10. You can make him, you can age him up like Schumacher did. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have to be, you know, I don't know. I, I think that there's a world where it absolutely can work. And I think that they should, you know, eventually like aim to have that. Mm -hmm. I think not doing it. I feel like every time a new director comes in, it's always, I have a new take on Batman. I have a new take on Batman. I have a new take on Batman. I'm like, cool, but what about the whole universe? Yeah, especially what about since a character it, like like Dick Grayson or, or Barbara yeah. Gordon is such a great window into that world. Like, oh that's such God. a great entry point. Yeah. No. And I mean, those characters go off and they have incredible stories on their own. Like, the transformation that Dick Grayson goes to yeah. from becoming Robin to becoming Nightwing to eventually even like being Batman for certain periods of time, Barbara Gordon, you know, becoming Batgirl and then becoming Oracle, like just all these things. So, I don't know. I would love to see the expansion of the Bat family. And I think with, um, yeah, I mean, I just think that the comics have just so much material 
And I think there's a lot of it that Matt Reeves, because he is so based in reality, it could be very, um, very brutal and, and just very heartbreaking at times. And I think it could make for really good stories. So I do hope that they do a bat family at some point. Like I know that they're, you know, Warner Brothers is doing like their Batgirl movie yeah, with J.K. Simmons with and Michael, and Michael Keaton. And I'm like, I do Michael Keaton. there. <laughs> I'm so confused by what this timeline's doing, but whatever. It's like God if dear. Matt Reeves can be the guy who can use HBO Max and theatrical releases to really build out a universe, then I'm all about it. Yeah. Just don't shy away from it. Embrace it. Uh, Roxy, right. what about you? Robin or Bat? Robin and Batgirl in this in this universe? I think it's a funny, uh, funny question because the question was tonally would they fit, and there shouldn't ever tonally be a place where Batman fits and and. Bar and Barbara Gordon, like that, that doesn't really make sense that they wouldn't fit mm-hmm. because they are that's the fit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I think that definitely they would fit. Now, does the rest of the DC slate and scope allow for that? Like Adam, I'm super duper confused on <laughs> that. Uh, and and that's okay, I don't need to know, you know, I'm yeah. not. Not an exec over at DC, so I don't have to be clear on that. And we're sure they know. Of course they know. None of them are confused. (laughs) Yeah, I'm very unclear on, especially also like with which movies are going to HBO Max and what's on the big screen. I'm I'm very unclear on their intentions with some of their characters and what they're what they're trying to do there. And that's okay. And maybe they're unclear on that. And maybe they're throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. And maybe if we really love Batgirl. And maybe we really love Batman. Mm-hmm. Then maybe they merge those. Then Robert Pattinson and Leslie Grace can oh make out. And- <laughs> oh God! I really, oh I really, no! I don't know. Uh, but tonally speaking, <clears throat> I think we're fine. Just yeah, universe yeah. speaking, I don't, I don't know because yeah. DC. What, what's your plan? Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and I do think it's good. I'm glad that they gave Matt Reeves the leash to kind of tell a standalone thing. It is interesting, and and like uh, and like my friend I was talking about. Other than I'd seen the trailers, I kind of stayed away from, especially when people had already seen it in the articles, because I kind of wanted to go in cold. But I saw mm-hmm. some headlines where I guess there was a conversation between Ra- Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves about Superman fitting into this universe, and Robert Pattinson was for it, and Matt Reeves was against it. And watching the trailer, I was like, it looks like we're kind of going a Dark Knight route, or that might not fit. And then watching the movie, like, no, this Batman totally could have a Robin and a Batgirl and Superman could be uh, hanging out in his neck of the woods. Cause, cause I'm a big believer that like, if you look at like the Christopher Reeve Superman and, and Tim Burton's Batman universe, theoretically they feel very different, but they should, that's the appeal of them crossing over Gotham and Metropolis should feel like different worlds. Right. And then they're interlinking because they are reflective of their two heroes. So it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. Superman's Metropolis should look completely different than the Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson Gotham. Yeah. And that's okay. But I, this world is heightened enough that I believe a Superman could exist here. Um, and it's heightened in such a specifically stylized way. That it's like the reading like the long Halloween where it's like you're kind of it feels more grounded, but also maybe a crocodile, crocodile guy lives in the sewers. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I can believe that. That's well, And that's the thing, too. You know, like I know there's been a little bit of press with Matt Reeves recently and talking about potential villains he'd want to do in the sequel. And I know he brought up Mr. Freeze and some people were saying, like, well, if you're going with such a realistic approach, grounded approach, can you even do a character like Mr. Freeze? And I'm like, you know what? Do it. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Wife, are there's you no reason. Me? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, there's no reason to not just embrace. Cause I, I think if you're going to do a series of Batman movies and you're so hell bent on making it feel as realistic as possible that you completely el- eliminate any of like the fantastical parts of it, then why would you do it? Cause yeah. it's a comic book. Like yeah. it's going to have fantastical parts about it. So I don't know. I, I, I would love to see characters like that brought back and done and done in a new, interesting way. Yeah. I want a Mr. Freeze Joker type movie so bad, though, that that's all I keep thinking about. Like a, a Mr. Freeze standalone? Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Really he's going to cool. get his HBO, his own HBO Max show. We're getting Don't 15. Worry, I'll be back. We're getting a no, 15. No, but not like that, yo. He's been done dirty. <laughs> what are you talking about? My movie was fantastic. How dare oh, you? No. We, we're going to go on another ad break and then we're going to come back with spoilers. So for those watching live, again, you can watch live on patreon.com slash only stupid answers. But for those watching live who have not seen the movie and want to go in spoiler free, now is a good time to say bye-bye. <laughs> uh, uh, so we'll, we, we'll see you on the other end of the ads. Okay, so we are back and we are going to go into full spoilers. And we're going to go, we're going to take this movie in chunks. I'm not going to go through it beat by beat because there's so many goddamn beats. Um, 
But the good news is, almost right off the bat, I get to get into my favorite sequence of the whole movie. Uh, we start we start with Riddler spying on a guy that we find out is the mayor, uh, and he mm-hmm. ends up killing him. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when we get the voiceover from Robert from Battinson as he's doing his narration and he's talking about the bat signal and fear and we see criminals across the city and the bat signal goes up and the the G, G Kino star, score just starts and they look in the shadows and there's like three different ones and you're like oh shit which one is Batman going to show up in it's like god damn it this is fucking <laughs> Batman shit and then oh my god and then uh, his steps like there's this there's this there's this difficulty with Batman that when you've watched as many Batman movies as we all have. Batman looks cool lurking in the shadows. Batman looks cool perching on things. Batman looks cool mm-hmm. leaping down, taking people. Batman looks kind of like a dweeb when he walks. It's like whenever he walks <laughs> like a person, it's like, well, that's just a dude in a suit. And yeah. I love that it feels like Matt Reeves' instinct was okay. Like, I'm, I can need to fix this because my Batman's going to be walking around. So he makes the walking threatening in and of itself because you hear, you see the shadow, you hear the footsteps, and then he walks in. And I like that the, the bat suit kind of looks like trash but that like works <laughs> like that like that works for the aesthetic of like this is a guy that cobbled something together yeah. that is specifically designed to hurt people very badly <laughs> yeah i completely agree with your assessment of the entire thing so far dj yeah the opening sequence uh the, the opening 10 minutes of this movie i was just like oh yeah if i could just man. watch that on loop <laughs> yeah yeah go into it and then i actually really loved this entire bat suit, but there was something very cool about the lower half, like even just like his calves yeah. that seemed that's that's where the grunge kind of comes in. That's where yeah. the Nirvana grunge, dare I say, mm-hmm. emo <laughs> kind of comes in because it did look like it looked like somebody in high school who would kick my ass. Like it looked like those people who would come to school in the boots that would be like, oh, this person knows what they're doing in a fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that that was really cool and different looking. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, it's a much more tactical suit. Like he's much, it's much more, it looks very much more military esque yeah. than like a, a, like the, you know, the Bad Flake suit was very much armor. Yeah. And it was just straight up ripped out of the comic books. Kind of the same thing with Christian Bale suits. Like they're mostly just like armor plates. And this has that, but this also has like a very tactical feeling. You know, he has like a holster on his right thigh and he's got all these massive pouches with all these different gadgets and gizmos. So yeah, I love that about the suit that it feels like it's just pieces just kind of put together. Yeah, he caught and, uh, it doesn't feel so sleek. Absolutely. That's that's a perfect way to describe it. And it's like we will get to the Batmobile in a minute, but it's it, yeah. it's cobbled together. And I think there's an opportunity. Um, there's a there's a funny beat that they revisit three times where he comes up, shows up to the iceberg lounge, first as yeah. Batman, oh then as God. Bruce Wayne, <laughs> then as kind of like an Bruce Wayne, in but between. in Batman mode. Yeah. And I feel like, oh, that's the hint of like for a sequel, we might get a more stealthy because this is this is Batman as like a battering ram. Like this is a Batman. <laughs> That shows up to just fuck your shit up. And it's yeah. like, okay, so maybe in a sequel we might see a more sleeker, streamlined version of what we've got going on here. But I remember mm. when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel. But with, within <sighs> context of the movie, it's like, oh, that's the point. The point is that it's yeah. kind of like shitty and cobbled together. Um, cobble potted together. Cobble potted together. Oh, I was oh you'd good cobble one. together again. So I've just been sitting here, sitting on that. <laughs> so I've just been waiting. <laughs> Rock's ready to drop her thing. So, anyway, in this, in this first sequence, uh, uh, so Riddler murders, in the, the opening of the movie, he murders Mayor Don Mitchell Jr. And, ba- and he leaves a clue and some ciphers, and Alfred helps with the ciphers. Shout out to Andy Serkis as, as Alfred. Um, uh, one of a few elements that appeared to be ripped from Batman, Jeff Jones and Gary Frank's Batman, Earth One, where Alfred's not a butler. He was like security guy for the Wayne. Yeah. Um, Y'all understand that code or not? Nah? Oh, fuck no. I don't. For, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm at a point in my life when I enter mystery movies and like, like this, I'm like, I'm not going to. I'm just going to let the movie I don't want to put my brain in tell me. They're like, remove the, <laughs> add the letters. No, try removing the letters. Nope, do sure. The, just do it. Just do the thing. I, I don't give like, a shit. I don't care. I'm not going to try and figure it out. Okay. I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm like halfway there. I'm like trying to, but then at a certain point, I'm like, why am I doing all this work? The movie's going to tell me the answers anyway. Exactly. Totally. I just need to sit around here for another yeah. two and a half hours. <laughs> just eat then. my popcorn and shut up and enjoy. Um, and then um, the Riddler's clues have a darkly humorous bent thumb drive. Thumb um, drive. I loved that. Yeah, that's the best bit. So good. Yeah. I love that. 
love that even tonally i was like oh you so know great. what this movie's doing yeah so, so jumping around a little bit riddler takes out like i said mentioned the mayor he takes out the commissioner pete savage uh who was uh, former partners with gordon and he takes out da gil colson and i love like we don't really spend any time with the city but i wish we did because i'm like could you imagine living in a city where your DA, your police commissioner, and your mayor were all murdered by the same guy? <laughs> like, like, what That's the crazy. fuck, man? That's crazy. Um, yeah. So the, the, what do we think about – we talked about that opening sequence. We talked about the bat suit. But what do we think about Robert Pattinson's Batman and, his, and, and, and also specifically the detectiveness of this Batman? In the whole movie or in the opening? Just in the whole movie. We're going to be – like I said, we're going to be jumping around a bit because I can't – there's a lot in this movie and we don't have the time to go through it yeah. beat by beat. <laughs> I think that the the best thing I could say is that I'm very, I would be very excited to see Robert Pattinson explore his version of Batman more yeah. in sequels because I, I still don't feel like, although this was a Batman movie and clearly is a Batman movie, I I didn't feel like I got to spend as much time or depth with him as I wanted to. Certainly not as Bruce Wayne, yeah. but even as Batman, I feel as if I still... I, I don't have a strong sense and I, which means a couple of things. It means number one, he certainly didn't do a bad job because you yeah. can tell very quickly if you don't like a Batman. Yeah. Um, but number two, there there's way more room to explore here. I feel very similar to how I felt about Henry Cavill after man of steel, yeah. which was just like, Oh, I think he's good for this. I think he's good for this role. I don't know how good, yeah. but I think good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Adam? What did you think? Um, I, I had similar feelings too, and I think the only reason, the only way I justified it to myself was that the movie takes place between October 31st and November 6th, I think. Yeah. It's only like a week long. So it really is just like a, 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 a sneak peek into the window of what that universe is and who that Batman is and yeah. how he kind of operates. So I think it made me excited to potentially have another movie, a series of movies where we can spend more time with him and kind of see how he grows into the role of Batman. Because, you know, by the end of the movie, even though it's a week, he does talk about the inspiration and the hope that he hopes he brings to the city and how the events of everything that has happened has kind of changed even his feelings towards the city. So I do hope that all of that stuff kind of leads into him being able to have the opportunity to grow more as a character and spend more time with him. But in terms of the the detectiveness of Batman in this movie, it's the most we've had, yeah. I think, in any movie. You know, we had some of it in Batman Forever when we had the Riddler last time, <laughs> but this is to a whole new level. Like, this is Zodiac 7, you know, and even just the first appearance of the Riddler in the movie was like, oh, man, if you love, like, 80 slasher movies, yeah. this is a horror character who just emerges from the depths of the shadows. I loved all that. And I love how they kind of play with those two characters kind of being, because normally they, I feel like they traditionally do with the Joker mostly. Yeah. And with this movie, they're really like exploring the two different sides of these characters. But yeah, so I, I think the detective stuff was something that I really, really loved. And I know Matt Reeves has said that they tried to put the camera in places to make you feel like you're a part of the story. Yeah. But there also was a part of me where I just kind of felt like I was just a passenger watching this guy just look around the room and look like it was, it was almost voyeuristic in a sense, yeah. but I really liked that. I liked being able to just observe, you know, Robert Pattinson looking around the room and just trying to get all these clues. And even the cops were doing, they would look at him and they're like, what the hell is he looking at? And I love that sort of just like, he didn't say much. He didn't move much but he was very observant of everything. And I, I really enjoyed that element of it. It's interesting. I like the way we visualize, and it's something that, that I clearly the movie's aware of because our very first trailer was that shot of Batman walking through the line of cops. But anytime he's like, yeah. with the detective stuff, he, he's forced to be in like a room with the police for yeah. extended periods of time. And it's interesting how, because this movie, is, I would not say this movie's grounded, and, and uh, but but in the, it makes it feel grounded in those moments because mm -hmm. um, he's just forced to operate around normal people. Um and it feels awkward. And it feels awkward. And I, and I think the 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 brilliance of the casting of Robert Pattinson is he's able to express a lot in without emoting anything. Because mm -hmm. when he in those scenes, he doesn't say a lot, um, and so he's forced to express a lot um, with his eyes. And, and I think the mask choice 
um, for for this purpose was really smart because he's able, other than the big armory helmets we force most Batmans to have, he's able to be more expressive. It does this Batman does take a lot of gunfire, and with automatic weapons, it would not be very difficult to just move up in the face direction. Uh, so I, I don't, it, so I don't, I don't know how all the time. how this how this Batman uh, like like when it's when it's armored and this is this is all you have to shoot that's like yeah that realistically if anybody's gone to a firing range that would be a and it's moving that would be a hard target to hit this batman yeah. you don't even need to any any facial area he's done <laughs> he's, he's he's done for um but whatever it's willing suspension to disbelief um but i think you're both right in that I, i'm inter- excited to see this this robert pattinson be able to evolve the bruce wayne aspect and be able to evolve this batman more but i really liked the the version of it we saw uh here um so moving on to our villains the case leads batman to the iceberg lounge which is cool it's cool that we got a movie with that in there uh, and he confronts uh uh colin farrell as penguin oh my god when i got to tell my wife that that was colin farrell she didn't know she was like wait <laughs> what i was like yeah that's crazy right um um and uh props for colin farrell for not letting the makeup do the acting for him um and uh, we also meet uh zoe kravitz as selena kyle um he also confronts i mentioned those bouncers at the beginning i i my head can in their tweedledee and tweedledum um, um so anyway we learned that uh, penguin is falcone's right hand man falcone played by john Turturro. And Selena has a secret connection to Falcone, which actually Bruce also kind of has a secret connection to Falcone. Um, but let's talk about the the Catwoman and Penguin. Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman, and uh, um, a little bit with Colin Farrell as Penguin. Let's be honest, it was basically a glorified cameo. He, he's not. He's not. He doesn't factor hugely into this movie. Mm-hmm. I I was just really excited that Colin Farrell was going to play that character, and then I saw when I saw that first teaser from fandom i actually didn't know that that was colin farrell Mm -hmm. i knew he was in the movie and i was like oh who's this character doesn't look like some mob boss guy i didn't know till after that it was him so that was super super impressive and he did an interview on hot ones on thursday where he talked about that makeup and it's amazing to me how far we've come with all that stuff to to make characters look like that and he gets completely lost in so i really like the the performance but you're right it's a very limited role and it really feels like Matt Reeves is mostly just like, you know, sprinkling all these seeds around in the movie yeah. for them to have greater expanded. Like he's getting his own HBO Max series. So that's really cool. Which um, is cool. I still don't know. Other than the fact, other than Zoe Kravitz not wanting to do it. How is a Zoe Kravitz Catwoman thing? Not your first HBO Max pitch. How is that not the first thing that you pitch coming out of this movie? It's like, yeah, give her a show. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I do wonder because I believe it's a prequel series that takes place before this movie. Oh, okay. You can have all those, like you could bring back John Turturro, you could yeah. bring Salvatore Moroni, and you can bring in Selena Kyle. God, so I, I think feel bad have, for anybody that's like, because we throw around Falcone and Moroni and all this stuff. It's like, shit, man, if you don't have like your Batman knowledge on lock, this movie's going to be hard to follow. <laughs> So my, that was the- my co-host for World Girls, Steph. She keeps calling him Ma- Mason. Mason. And I was like, "Who are you talking about? Yeah. Like, which one?" I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm with you completely on the the pitches for the HBO Max shows. However, to me, by far and away, lights out. It, it, it's Colin Farrell. I mean, to me, he was hands down the best performance in the movie. No questions asked. And we have a lot of great performances here, but Mm -hmm. the the full blown transformation. And I'm kind of surprised that both of you guys felt this way. And I keep hearing this on the internet. I felt like there was a ton of penguin in this movie. I thought thought his, I didn't think his role was limited at all. I felt like his presence on screen was so large and then, and pretty frequent. Yeah. I think it was well utilized. Honestly, it, it might be one of those. So when it comes to like, to Turo and as Falcone and Catwoman and stuff like that. I like, this is one of those situations where I like all of it, but I think my editor brain kicks in and it's like, cut this, cut this, cut, you know what I mean? It's like, we don't need it. Like it's not, if it's not telling the story, because the story we're telling here is about Batman going from, I am vengeance to realizing that he can actually be a more positive influence on the city. That's the arc we're going on. And if it doesn't support that, it's cool. And as a comic fan, I love seeing it cut it out of the movie because we we just need to make it tighter we just need to because because by the end once we get to like the reveals and everything it's like at that point i'm, I'm kind of like it's kind of white noise it's like you know what i mean it's like I'm, i think we're just it's ready for this to wrap it up um so with it uh i actually would have probably cut down penguin even more like he's Falcone's right hand guy. Fans, we know oh, Penguin. He, he's going to show up later, but it, maybe he factors in in less. You know what I mean? Just less of the movie because it's it's. No, it's, I don't know what you mean. 
I hear you, but I don't know what you mean. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you've spoken about the runtime, but I was super unbothered by the runtime. Okay. I was very intrigued the whole movie. This didn't feel too long for me. And for the story that they were trying to tell, I actually thought it was a very appropriate run runtime. I think that while they, of course, there are things they could have cut. I think the things that they would have cut probably would have been some of my favorite moments. And that's the, that's the kill your darlings kind of a thing. That's the kind of the, that's the difficult part. It's kind of the same thing with like, with, with Dune. It's like, I, I feel like you could have cut Dune down and made the full first book one movie, but you're going to cut things that book fans like or scenes that people like, but that's, that's mm -hmm. cut editing is you gotta, you know what I mean? You gotta think uh, forest for the trees kind of a situation. You know what I mean? Like, um, or not, or you do what he did. And it's, and it looks, yeah. listen, Dune did, what it needed to do and this movie's going to do new do yeah. what it needs to do so what the fuck do i know like you know what i mean i think it would make those movies better but yeah. clearly the movies don't need that <laughs> i was also i also like the runtime didn't bother me one bit at all like yeah. i never there was never a moment where i looked at my watch and i was like god damn when the hell is this movie over not at all because i was so into the movie and i'm like i could have watched a five-hour cut of this movie if i'm being totally honest would i want that no mm -hmm. but if it was available would i watch it and would i probably not bat an eyelash probably it didn't bother me one bit that's cool all right all right well it's just me then just me <laughs> just me i was by once we got into our two climaxes i was like ah well, this could have been tighter uh but the yeah. only thing that i think maybe could have been shortened down is like at the end where he's narrating yeah. you know at the very very end they have a little bit of an epilogue that was the one thing I was like, okay, maybe we could have ended a little bit sooner, but then you wouldn't have closure on some of these characters. And then yeah. I would have been like, well, what, what happens with them? And how about I that this was the only part that had like real heart too. I yeah. That one of the things that this movie was lacking for me was heart. How about end, this edit, Roxy? How about this edit? Okay. So, okay. so you want, you want more penguin. Let's have already have Falcone out of the picture and penguins already in charge. And so we just cut the whole Falcone you want element less out of it. Falcone? Yeah, listen, but then, but then that completely affects Bruce's story. I, well, it does, but it the, the affects the story we're told here. You, you these, you know, these are decisions. It's kind of like my, yeah. my thing when people are like, "So you're you're in pre-production at this point." Well, exactly. Rejected. Well, that's the kind of the thing is you like reject your edit, DJ. <laughs> I know, I know. And again, again, it's not like it's it's going to hurt this movie. You know what I mean? Mm. Like this movie is going to do just fine. So who the what the yeah. what the fuck do do I know? Um, I just think it would have made a made a tighter, more compelling movie to to just it's it, it's same thing with dialogue, right? And, and I think what was affected about Robert Pattinson's performance. Sometimes with dialogue, it's not just what characters say, but what they don't say. You know what I mean? And and if you can if you can take a take a line of dialogue that or a monologue that's like twenty lines and say the same thing mm -hmm. in ten, do that. You know, um, uh, 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 what is it, what's the Shakespeare line? Um, Brevity is the soul of wit. Me, I have no clue. Brevity is the soul of wit. Um, mm. so, so I, I think, but it, whatever, Does, doesn't matter. But I do want to say before we move on, um, yeah, a lot of love for for. Um, uh, uh, Colin Farrell's Al Pacino impression, but um, Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. I do wish, no, I do wish her Catwoman was a little bit more um, ambiguous. Uh, this this version of Catwoman very much is, for the most part, team good guy, and I think it would have been very compelling if she was more like uh, the comics from a few from decades ago at this point where it's more like oh good guy bad guy anti-hero kind of a thing that said i think zoe kravitz is perfectly cast i think she's very great in it um uh, this is less important but she's hot as hell in the role uh uh oh, yes yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah it's crazy i think in comparison to batman though it is a little good guy bad guy because yeah. because he will not kill we have a movie in which Batman doesn't kill. I mean, uh, I mean, I will say by the end we do get a little classic manslaughter. Like, uh, you don't kill, but you definitely let other people shoot other people <laughs> to avoid getting shot yourself. Wait, but he's still oh, not killing. Quick, quick. Uh, and also that on. fucking car. I, I'm, I, the whole. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really like the car chase sequence, Adam. To go with you, what you were talking about with Matt Reeves saying we're like we want you to be there. I think that was a, to a detriment of the car chase, to where I was like, I don't mm. know what's fucking happening right now. And also, how many people fucking died in that pileup when Batman could have just tailed? You could have just tailed Cobblepot. But you could have. He's put not killing. <laughs> he's not, that's that, all wait, I've, been sitting, I've been sitting on this tweet for a week because I don't want to get yelled at. But this is what it is. Yes. Apes not kill apes. Batman not kill people. Matt Reeves not kill franchises. So good, right? <laughs> it's good. Now, it's um, good. Why haven't you tweeted that yet? Come on. Because I'm, I'm scared if I tweet it, people are going to be like, Batman doesn't kill anybody. Spoiler, spoiler. Oh, maybe. You're right. What, yeah, that's what, a, that's what, a crazy what thing. What case is going to this movie being like, uh, he's going to kill a lot of he's people. Kill, well, listen. Uh, the, the Zack Snyder version of Batman <sighs> was a little loosey-goosey on that front. <laughs> 
You guys feel this like movie's not for those people. Sorry. You think I'm good to tweet it? You guys think it's not spoiler? I think I think I'm about, you, I'm, I got Twitter open waiting, so I'm ready to retweet that. <laughs> tweet it out, or or if you want to be safe, wait till Monday. I support. I yeah. support. Monday. Yeah, wait till Monday. Somebody else is going to tweet it by then. DJ. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Nah. Now that you've said it, though, nah. you do run the risk that no, you have true. said it out loud. Someone else has already tweeted at this point. Yeah, I'm tweeting it right now. <laughs> I think I'll wait till tomorrow. There you go. There you go. Good. Fair call. enough. I don't so, know why. <laughs> so while we're on while we're on villains, while we're on villains, um, we we let's go to Riddler, and we're going to kind of barrel through here. So basically, what we learn about Riddler is he was an orphan screwed over by um, the city's Falcone's appropriation of mm-hmm. this Rain, Wayne renewal fund. Wayne uh, Thomas Wayne was running for mayor. By the way, God bless this movie for not showing us the Wayne murders again. Uh, we just get echoes of it specifically when Batman looks at that one kid, which I was like, yes, that's what you do because we all, it is interesting how this movie kind of felt like a sequel to a movie we never got. Uh, and which I'm totally fine with. Yeah, it's, it's it's like, listen, the, the movies previous, this one are the nine other Batman movies we've yeah. already gotten. I feel like in the second sequel, we're going to get the pearls hitting the ground. No, no, God, no, please. <laughs> no. God, no. Um, save me the pain. Uh, so, um, we even got it in the fucking Joker movie. Batman's not even in that movie. Uh, anyway, <sighs> so, uh, 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 we, so anyway, Thomas Wayne was running for mayor, this this was kind of stupid. I thought he, he he goes to the story we're told is he goes to Falcone to deal with a reporter last name Elliot. Uh, put a pin in that. Um, um, and the he thought Falcone was just gonna scare the guy because I guess Thomas Wayne's a fucking idiot. And then he was all pissed off that Falcone murdered the uh, reporter. And right. then and then uh, he mysteriously died that night when he was like, "I'm gonna out Falcone." Sure. Uh, and then, um, it, uh, oh, but but I do want to mention this was all the cover up uh, Martha's history as an Arkham. That's her maiden name in this, which again mm. is one of my favorite plot details from Batman Earth One. Yeah. Um, I, I thought once once they introduced that, I'm like, that's brilliant. That's so it's such a great concept. Wait, tell me what you think so brilliant about it. So um, in Batman Earth One, what we introduce is that there, there's a history of mental health um, uh, issues in Wayne's family and right. um, Martha's last name is Arkham so Arkham Asylum that whole Arkham history is directly connected to Bruce Wayne and I think no, in this in this movie though. in this movie and in the comic in Batman the Earth One yeah Batman Earth One and I just thought it was a great way to to tie those concepts together and um and complicate Batman's um history a little bit um I I kind of wish this movie had committed more to letting the Waynes be complicated figures instead of backtracking. It's like, no, let Thomas be a scumbag. I think a Batman that has to reckon with the idea that the person whose his whole identity is to avenge kind of was a dick. Uh, I think that's mm-hmm. actually a compelling question that Bat- Batman should answer, but th- this movie does... Every, every time the comics or anything else tries to complicate the Wayne history, it walks it back. It's like, actually, Thomas Wayne's still a good guy. It's like, all right, whatever. Um, yeah. So this whole that whole thing worked for you guys. Um, again, it's one of those things that I don't know that this movie necessarily needed. Um, just kind of like getting into Falcone's history with Catwoman as a comic fan, very cool. Did the movie yeah. need it, or is that just more things that pad out our runtime? I, mean, I don't know. Um, I don't even know if it necessarily pads out a runtime, but I think for me, it 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 is another attempt to seed in a bunch of stuff for the future. If you know, if you interconnect everything. In, in that way, and you really, like, if you really sink Batman's roots deep into Gotham City, then I think if you're the filmmaker, it seems like it could be a very compelling story that you can explore, not just on the big screen, but in other things that surround it. Yeah. It's something that I really wanted. I was really hoping that we would get Martha Arkham in a version of a Batman movie, because I do feel like it could, it's a really um, eye-opening thing for Batman and Bruce Wayne to deal with, yeah. you know, the fact that he is trying to avenge the the murder of his family while at the same time there is a lot of really crooked shady history in his own past that he has to deal with. Yeah. I think Just the movie so have- touches on it, but I think it needs to explore it a little bit more to make it clearer. Just so I have it right because I've only seen the movie once as of this point. Me too. So what happened was Martha's mom killed Martha's dad and then Martha went to Arkham um, that, I, I don't know that she specifically went to Arkham, but yes, that lead lead up part. Or went, yeah, went to, uh, and that Did she go to. I think she went to Blackgate. Oh, Blackgate, maybe? yeah. She, she was she was in some sort I of could facility. Be wrong. I could be some wrong. Some facility, yeah. and so 
when that information was going to come out, Thomas decided that he was going to go to Falcone because yeah. Martha didn't want that coming out. So he did it to protect her. I don't know that Martha didn't want it coming out. He didn't want that hurting Martha and her yeah. public perception of her. Or he didn't at least want that's, it hurting Martha that she had been in the facility or that her mom had killed her dad. I think all of it. I think all of it. And I think, yes. Yeah, I think I think uh, he didn't want any of that stuff coming back to bite Martha. And so he thought, so he good idea. Falcone. I'm going to call my mob buddy. And I'm sure this is going to work out great for me. <laughs> yeah. He's going to rough up this guy, but not kill but him. But not kill him. Yeah, Why would he? Intimidate him. Yeah, as not he would he? He's not a violent so criminal. DJ, so you're thinking, DJ, that this is a hush storyline then? Well, what's interesting, I thought, some, me and some friends were speculating that this version of Riddler actually would be Tommy Elliott from the comics, Hush. And so right. literally, like literally when the thing comes, like the reporter's name was Elliot. And then literally Hush comes on, Riddler's like- On the screen. Propaganda yeah. thing, Hush comes on. I was like, I was like, oh yeah. And my, and my wife was like, what are you talking about? Let's just wait. And yeah. then- it, it does. It does. I think this is like Adam was talking about. This is one of those seeds for later. It's like it does not pertain at all to the rest of the yeah. movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm. A, I at least. I at least. I guess got what was happening here. Yes. This, this whole part for me was a little bit like. Like, and it happens uh, really I, fast too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then it leads yeah. to a scene that I really like, which with with Bruce and Alfred, where he kind right. of like Alfred, but it, but it dealt, it did felt like it a scene to him scene from a different Batman movie where Batman and Alfred spent more screen time together. Like like this yeah. this only works because I know of Bruce and Alfred's history through the other things I've watched. That's, not because of what this movie's doing. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna. That was exactly like one thing that I thought of was like, damn, if you don't bring your like collective knowledge of the Batman universe and like the context of like even all the movies and animated stuff and yeah. everything that you've read and watched about these characters, there is like almost little, no time spent with Bruce and Alfred together. Yes. And like the only reason I feel emotional about all the things that happens to Alfred in this movie is because I'm bringing all that baggage with me. But if you've, it's, it's hard to believe that this is the first Batman movie that anyone will ever see in their life. But if it is it's possible, you might, you might go into this movie going, Am I supposed to care this much? Yeah. Of or... course, this is going to be the first Batman movie so many people see. We're like, just adults. For like 13 so... year old. Like, yeah. yeah. I, but you might watch it. You might watch uh, a, an animated show or something like that. But I do I do think it's important to, to think of this. I think this movie would have benefited from. And again, when I say this stuff, I really, really like this movie. I do yeah. think this movie would have benefited from. Like, like I love that um, we got like, like Catwoman is Falcone's kid i don't know that we needed to reveal that in this movie we already know listen it's a batman movie it's getting sequels we already know mm. we're building hbo max shows that is information that can be revealed in another thing it, and it's mm. just information that matt reeves and the creators know in the back of their mind but it's not a plot point that matters to this movie mm. um and so that maybe then we could get more time with with uh, bruce and alfred because their relationship is a little bit different in this movie um and it's and i only think my understanding is that he was the Wayne security detail because of one line he says, and because I know yeah. the Batman Earth One comic, Earth One comic book. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, there's there's no context in this movie. Like, is he a butler? I don't fucking know. He's good yeah. at ciphers, which that was cool. I'm glad that like, oh, Alfred's helpful. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly enough, though, I went with Drina Ariano and Steph Sabra, who are my two World Girl co-hosts, and D and I are like diehard Batman fans. You know, like have watched all the movies, have read a lot of the comic books. I've, you know, I went through six seasons of Gotham, so that gives me God some bless, God bless, you. God bless. Um, and so we walked out of this with in one way, and Steph, who has not seen all the Batman movies, who does has never read a comic book for Bat, and just uh, does not know much about batman was the one who was most in love with the movie oh cool oh, oh great. cool good for her <laughs> that, that was interesting that's yeah, awesome she walked out and she was like that was fucking amazing and i was My like oh whoa i was concerned that you were gonna be like who was <laughs> yeah so Granted, many she didn't know names all the characters and name. information and then yeah. we introduced drops my, and drop heads yeah, i always <laughs> feel like my my hope for these movies and if people walk out of it whether they love it or not i hope that if they're at least intrigued to maybe like pick up at least one comic book yeah. that inspires the material to say like, Oh, okay. I may, maybe I have a little bit of a better understanding or better context, but you know, that's me living in a, in a, uh, I don't know. That's a lot of wishful thinking on my part, I well, guess. And God bless this movie for going so hard. Like the, the ads for this for this specific movie have advertised the comics, and then the, yeah, the special true. thanks to the comic creators is like a wall. It's it's like a wall of text, and it's like, oh, cool, mm -hmm. like cool, cool. Yeah. Um. But anyway, 
all this to say, all this is basically about the, the we've learned that Riddler is one of these orphans that was supposed to be benefited from this fund and he wasn't because of the graft from like Falcone and the mayor and all these mm. people. Um, what did we think of Paul Dano's Riddler? I really liked it. I don't know if I was necessarily 100% on board with the backstory of how the character came to be. Yeah. I, I don't remember which comic book it is, but there is a version where Edward Nashton is actually a, a uh, detective at GCPD and he's obsessed with finding out the identity of Batman. So yeah. I, I thought that there, I was hoping that they would kind of go more that route, that they would find out that he's actually like a cop on the payroll of either the mob or whoever. Yeah. The backstory of like him, them tying him directly to kind of Bruce Wayne. I was like, mm, it, it works. It, it works in the context of the movie. I just wasn't, it, I didn't really like get sucked in by it so much, but I did love how he plays the character. It's very different than what we've seen before, Yeah. but I was kind of hoping for that. I didn't want to see the animated series version. I didn't want to see another, you know, version of the Jim Carrey thing. So I liked the fact that they went with this more Zodiac serial killer uh, route. I thought I was really intrigued by that. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I thought he pulled it off really, really well. What about you, Roxy? What I, I wanted to see them do was I wanted his dad to have been the reporter and that's how he was orphaned. And that's well, why. And, that, and that would have made him Tommy out. That would have made him. And I thought that's what we were doing, which made right. the whole mm. like reveal that no, he's just Edward Nash. And I was like, and they even when they pull out his IDs, he has two he's IDs. He's got multiple IDs. And yeah. That doesn't yeah. matter. That's like irrelevant. And they find out like, no, actually he's Edward Nash. And it's like, Okay, the weird weird to introduce the multiple IDs then if it doesn't fucking yeah. matter. <laughs> right. And but just even like regardless of the uh history that makes sense for this, just storytelling wise, the reason that I wanted that mostly other than it would have been fucking sick for Batman fans, but the reason that I mostly wanted it was because it did feel so arbitrary and almost made me feel like he was a little stupider than I thought he was or had hoped he was when he doesn't know who this is. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't know who Batman is and also thought that Batman was on his team and but didn't know who he was. So yeah. I thought that they that while Paul Dano did everything with this role right, mm -hmm. I thought that the role there was a couple of tweaks that could have taken like two seconds that just would have made the character so much more intriguing. Yeah. And I also think for me, I like the concept of making him more Zodiac. I like Paul Dano as an actor. I do think a lot of what he does and the way he goes about it echoes Heath Ledger's Joker and the Dark Knight. And that's not a comparison that's going to make anybody look good. Like, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, oh, this, it, I wish this was cooler. Like I, w I wish, I wish this was either more different or it's just you're not gonna. And we're gonna get to uh, actors stepping in, uh, being compared to Heath Ledger's Joker in a minute. Uh, that's gonna pertain to a specific scene later in this movie. Oh, what do you mean? Oh no, uh, sorry, Barry Keegan. Uh, uh, um, but <laughs> well, I think uh, it's also tough too because I think like the Dark Knight, the way it did certain things, it was very much. I feel like ahead of its time, whereas yeah. this feels very much of its, of time. its time. Yeah. And I will so. say the catch 22 there is he Ledger's Joker is so good. It overshadows almost everything else. It like, it, it, it basically steals the it's movie away from movie. Batman. Yeah. It steals <laughs> yeah. the movie away from Batman. That is not, this is a Batman movie. Riddler does yeah. not do that. He doesn't steal the, like the light. I will say my favorite scenes, I liked the, the the scene in the interrogation room I thought was mostly pretty compelling. My favorite Riddler scene, and I've seen some people like spoiler free wise uh, in ways kind of dunk on it, but it's my favorite Riddler, Riddler scene is when Batman punches in the code and we see his little stream like, hey guys, thanks for your support. And I'm like, fuck yeah, this is, I needed more of this version of Riddler. <laughs> totally <laughs> this fucking because dork that is of its time <laughs> yes that is very much and that you is... see the comments on the side and you're like oh mm -hmm. god yeah, yeah this 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 is too familiar fucking scary and by the way yeah. who knew how fucking precarious this version of gotham is a very precarious place it's like yeah this one wall is protecting the, the entire city from apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> from apocalyptic yeah. flooding which made sense because i was like god part way through this movie i'm like god it fucking rains a lot in gotham and then when that <laughs> revealed that it's like oh yeah because it's below seawater i'm like oh fuck it's, <laughs> that's that's part of why it rains so much that's why they took all the time to show you how fucking yeah. how it rains all the fucking time um and that brings us to 
the finale, which of course Riddler, being a Batman villain, has big plans for the city. Um, uh, they, they're surprisingly simple and and echoes of Arrow season one. Uh, the hero biffs it and doesn't save, <laughs> doesn't save Gotham. Um, he he mostly sort of saves the mayor, um, which leads to a big action scene that I thought was pretty fucking cool. Um, and, the and mayor's like, I'm not afraid. Yeah, yeah, but I get what you. I appreciate where your head's at, but in this specific situation. Uh, you should be. <laughs> you should. You should be. It was just like an unbelievable. I'm not afraid. Nothing could go wrong. Shot. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Like immediately. Like yeah. It's like, can we put you in some kind of body armor or anything? For, like, <laughs> yeah. I get what you're trying. Can we do. put I, like a I camera love that you're on? Not fleeing. Yeah. You stay backstage. We'll put a cam. There's cameras all over here. We'll put a camera on you. <laughs> right. Like you don't need to run. You don't need to hide. But like, can we not put you center stage? Yeah. yeah don't all be right. stu- Literally, literally every major elected official has been murdered by this guy. <laughs> Yeah. We don't like, go front and center. Yeah, with almost no freak. Like the DA didn't have any, even have security on him when he was yeah. kidnapped. No, just walked out by herself. Too. We've literally, like, we've literally done nothing to protect anybody. Yeah. Uh, although I, I don't know if we're going to mention it. So I just want to mention now, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon is as good as you would expect it to be. It's, yeah, it's great. Come on, awesome. come on. And so we actually got good. a good, uh, decent amount of him. Oh yeah, good. And oh, I yeah. like that it's like oh, immediate, yeah. like. God, I fucking love the scene where where they're in the interrogation room and they're trying to figure out Batman's escape. Um, I thought the wingsuit was a little silly, but silly, but I love that he when he biffed it on the bridge. But then the bit they have later when Gordon's like, "You could have pulled your punch." You could have pulled your. Punch. I did. I did. <laughs> and like Robert, the Robert Pattinson delivers it perfectly. Like, wait, I did. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I love that. We got to get you out of here. I'm like, yes, let's go. Oh fuck, it was yeah, good. He's great. So anyway. Uh, the big finale and, and we get, we've talked about it throughout, but we got, um, um, teases for several things. We mentioned the Tommy Elliott stuff. Um, of course we get a scene in Arkham where Barry Keegan is very playing, a, a, is his, the character specifically listed as unseen Unnamed. Arkham prisoner. Oh, unseen. Yeah. Uh, that motherfucker oh, actually not what he was initially listed at. He was listed as a detective. Stanley Markle. Movie. They oh. actually shot scenes. They shot fake scenes. Well, that didn't to, work. Uh, that, throw off people. That didn't throw anybody off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you knew going into it. Oh yeah, because there's some reports that he was going to be, and I didn't see. I didn't hear about the scene, so I just like there was some like, oh, I, think I did he's not. Be. I did not know. I was uh, hoping once we cool. found out that Riddler wasn't. I guess maybe it's supposed to be ambiguous, but he's not Tommy Elliot. I thought like, oh, that's who Barry Keegan should be. He should be Tom. That's who we should seed. Mm. No, the motherfucker's Joker. Think there's any chance that he is Tommy Elliot? Who? Sure. I mean, I guess. Edward Ashton? Riddler. That, that, that oh. Riddler, I mean, uh, that Riddler's Tommy Elliot? That maybe, yeah. still, maybe, like, maybe it's supposed to be like, because they leave, Swerve. they leave him knowing whether Bruce Wayne is Batman ambiguous. Like, they don't, they I don't, I felt like, like it was not ambiguous. I felt like he didn't fucking know, but. I'm, yeah, I'm I felt like they definitely try to bait you into making you think that he knows he's Batman. And then halfway through the conversation, you're like, oh, he doesn't know. I also, Just why wouldn't they have, they must've thought about that. So why would they not have done that? I, I feel like, I feel like he should have just known, but that wasn't the point. Like that wasn't the point of like what his mi- objective was. I do like that. It leads to one of Batman's big errors because the video that basically reveals the entire plan is right there, mm-hmm. but it's clear. Batman thinks this is going to out him. And so right. he's like, well, I'm not going to help you solve this. You're a good cop. Yeah, you're a good cop. I'm not going to help you solve this. And then that ends up being the one thing. It's like, ah, fuck, fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so so uh, Barry Keegan is is a very likely uh, the, the Joker. Uh, no, he is the Joker. Oh, he is. He is a uh, Joker. Cool. Anyone who doubts that, you can just go watch. Uh, There's an interview with Matt Reeves today that confirmed it. Oh, cool. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I like Barry. You Keegan. love it, don't you? <laughs> I, I like Barry Keegan. I uh, uh, I don't know that. I, I don't listen. I'm excited for them to do Mr. Freeze in the sequel. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> you want to yeah, know I how mean, Barry got those scars, though. Oh, cool. <laughs> actually, honestly, you know what I would like to see is I would like to, uh, and, and I think just from a production standpoint, from a creative standpoint, this would be the way to go. Joker should not be, let's say they're planning a Matt Reeves trilogy, a Robert Pattinson trilogy. Joker should never be the main bad guy in any of those movies. He should always be like the next movie opens with Batman foiling the Joker crime and then he goes back to Arkham and then we deal with Mr. Freeze. And I, I think that for a couple of reasons. One, um, Barry Keegan, great actor. He's going to have to compete with both Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, and I don't think that he... I don't think what I saw from this did not make me think that his take on Joker is up to that challenge. Um, and so I think it's so unfair to call it his take on Joker. 
it, yeah, it just didn't. I, I th- this was the one scene in the movie I was like, mm, boo, I don't like this. Um, uh, and uh, so I think it'd be better to just distance themselves from the Joker movies they're making and then just uh, distance themselves from um, uh, Heath Ledger's performances. Don't make Joker. And also, there's so many other villains, and we've done Joker so many times. Have him show up, imply that Batman stopped him, but never have him be like the main dude. And for the second movie, like, yeah. we're going to. You know, we're going to do it for the middle movie. Again, for the second movie. Yeah. Yeah. It just, I, I, I fucking love Barry Keegan. He's Allen. really talented. He's a really gifted He's actor. He's so talented. Feeling of a sacred deer? Mm. For some reason, to me, he is like the sexiest. I just think he is mm. so fun. Interesting take. Not, Interesting take. I, I <laughs> Listen, boy, after watching Eternals, he was I, creepy to me. And I'm like, oh, he's actually very charming guy okay i'm into it It, it's so weird because anybody i run that by they're like huh and i'm like it's fucking creepy he just does it for me i don't know what it is yeah um that being said this was a bummer when when he came on at the end i was like nah man yeah i I just was not happy about it because we know what it means you know Mm -hmm. there's no way that's not what we're gearing up for and it was just like why did you guys think you had to do that yeah, and it's and not I like I love the Joker. He's one of my favorite characters, but like maybe save it till a third movie. If if you make him the main one all, but again, Batman mm-hmm. has has the greatest rogues gallery in all of comics. There's so many villains that we haven't seen Don. We've got so many Jokers and great takes on Jokers that it's like, sure, I love the and Matt Reeves is clearly he said he's building his Batman universe. Have Joker be a part of that, but don't have him be a main part of that because again, well, maybe we, that's what he's doing. Which would be great, I but and and I couldn't help but think about like the card in Batman Begins and how perfect that was the little Joker yeah. card in Batman Begins and how heavy handed this felt. It's like, uh, mm-hmm. but I will say, what? Adam, you just mentioned killing of a sacred deer, and it's mm-hmm. like, oof, if Barry Keegan could tap into that vibe where it's like, so hot, where he's just like, <laughs> well, shit's happening. I mean, what do you expect me to do about it? Shit's happening. I don't yeah. know what. Hey, this is just the way things are going. It's like, oh yeah, that would actually be pretty good. Maybe, maybe yeah, that yeah. was, maybe that was how he got the role. But that's not the only, the the really. I think there's a really small. I haven't heard people talking about a really small uh, tease for another villain, which is in the final fight. Batman gets his fucking ass beat by these guys, and he. Uh, he gets like a shotgun to the chest and that's enough to like knock him out of it. And he's about ready to go down and he pulls this little like EpiPen like thing with a glowing green liquid and he injects it. And I like that it has, it even has a little port. <laughs> so he doesn't yeah. like to get in there. I think that's venom. Um, that, which is for those that don't know, um, uh, that's the drug that makes venom, uh, venom. It makes the vein venom. easy. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, it makes, it's a crossover. Yeah. With venom, <laughs> it's, it's Tom, right. Tom Hardy will be back as venom. Yeah. Um, and Bane, Bane and Bane, Bane yeah, yeah. and venom. Um, no, but it's, it's the drug that makes Bane super strong. And it was originally before Bane was introduced. It was originally introduced, uh, introduced as a drug Batman was taking to help him stay on top of being Batman. Mm. and so that's the only reason i can think of like why it was like glowy green goo and i was like oh that's your that's your in for bane being a thing doesn't uh, scarecrow have the some glowy green goo too? the fear toxin yeah. Listen, we love our joker use glowy green goo we love it i just it's just within the context <laughs> of the green way, goo comics is just the win all we love it it's uh, but but within the context of of kind of like uh an adrenaline hit it was like oh maybe yeah. that's fucking venom I, I yeah but what what show was i just watching with the glowy green goo with scarecrow was it was it titans was it it might have been Titans. It might have Titans. Might I, have been I don't even. They're all. It's a. It's a blur right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a blur. So so before we wrap up, with all that in mind, where do we think we've already been talking about a little bit? But where do we think we go in the future? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, they are they are doing that Penguin series. They're doing that GCPD series. They're doing an Arkham series. God damn it! <laughs> so again, I think like uh, maybe a little bit to the detriment of the film, they had they felt obligated to you know plant so many seeds. For all this other stuff that I'm like, I think they're doing all those series actually. They are well. Th- that's what they announced. It, so I, I know, I know but, but it, th- that all sounds yeah. like it could be one series. I feel like you could do all of the things in one series. Well, I think the I think the Penguin one is a prequel that takes place. I don't know how far in the past. And I think GCPD takes place during year one of Batman's uh, tenure, and then I think Arkham is like a sequel to the movie. But I could be wrong. Who knows? Tomorrow they could cancel everything. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I, the Arkham one's interesting to me because I'm wondering who's in Arkham. I honestly, I would like an Arkham Harley Quinn esque cartoon where it's just following the guards at Arkham while they're trying to manage these fucking lunatics that they have to keep yeah. track of. And it's yeah. like a comedy. It's like a workplace comedy. Um, I, I do hope that in the sequels that we can build. I I also like. I don't. 
not that I don't want to see the Joker, but I don't want the Joker to be a main villain in a movie. Like I do hope that they use the next couple of movies to build up the roster of rogues. Yeah. And then maybe Joker could end up, you know, taking over as the leader of it and ousting the penguin out or whatever. But I don't necessarily want to see Barry Keoghan's Joker as like the main villain for one movie. We've done that so many times at this point that I'm yeah. like, ah, I've been there, done that. I, I know fans get super excited when it's like, we're doing a new Joker. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. there's so many villains do something else. Um, but it would be cool to maybe see him as like sort of like a criminal leader in, in some regard and to see like how he's been puppeteering everything and maybe how he betrays all these villains or whatever the case may be. But I do think that we are leading into some, I don't want to say crossover because I feel like that would incorporate other heroes, but some massive event that will incorporate a ton of villains, which I think could be fun and different. Do you I, guys think that we are ever going to see Robert Pattinson on screen with either Gal Gadot or Jason Momoa or Henry Cavill or no. Ray Fisher? Very likely no. Um, yeah, or, I, I I second Adam's I'd say sor- no. sorrowful no because I honestly also not th- even sorrowful because I don't even feel like Pattinson's Batman fits with what those movies are doing. I, maybe not, but I do. This is a Batman I would like to see. This. Again, since this feels so much like the comic animated video game Batman, this mm-hmm. is a Batman who would 100% buy running into Superman and like dealing with. Oh, that. for sure. And so recast, like, all, recast them all. Um, sure. I, I do kind of wish maybe they'd waited to see how this goes before they like double down on like Keaton being the new Batman. And it's like, well, just wait. Or, or also, like, what are you going to have Keaton do that Ben Affleck couldn't have done? It's not like Keaton's going to be in those movies a lot. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. He's probably not going to have as many memes, you know? But God, I do damn. think on that note, Ben Affleck just, and I think this is like a thing that constantly shows up on Twitter is people are like, Matt Reeves stole Batman from Ben Affleck. No. And it's like, the guy didn't want to do it anymore. No. It, it, I Let honestly, it was probably God. for his mental health. that he, He's, he's yeah. like, listen, I didn't start drinking again until Batman. Jesus okay. I can't Christ. do it. <laughs> um, what about you, Roxy? Do you think, do you think that we'll uh, see Robert Pattinson crossover with those versions of the character? Do you think we'll introduce new ones to, to compliment him? The only thing that makes me think we might, or I guess two things are number one, Ezra Miller appearing on the flash show yeah, because you just never know when they're going to do some kind of like mini cameo, something multiverse, something. Yeah. Um, Or Robert Pattinson as not the Batman is something else. And we are just being cheeky. Yeah. Uh, And number two, the weird nightmare dream sequence. uh, You're too soon. Mm -hmm. And if there's any way we can try to pull in with things like that, because I I just right now, this movie is doing the best critically for DC that a movie has done. I I don't know since when, right. I mean, like right now, this is a 90, a 94 on Rotten Tomatoes for audiences and an 80, 80 or something. In my notes, it's 85 for, for critics. That's really good numbers for DC. They're pulling in big. And so I don't know. I, I, I don't think so, but I wouldn't put it beyond the realm of possibility. We're in a fucking multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Matt Reeves is so anti that, that he would rather not do a sequel. Right. But Matt Reeves is not the head of Warner brothers, you know? No, no. for sure. But I, I think, think if this movie's, off, I think but... this, if this movie's very successful, yeah. then they're going to want him to come back. And if they're like, you got to put Superman in it, he might be like, I'm good. Well, I, don't think else. I don't think for movie number two. Yeah. No, sure. But a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Just down the line, maybe at some point. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not against so, it. I, I guess I'm not against it. My priority, though, is like Bat Family. Please. Yeah. Uh, maybe a Robin. Yeah, but how are we going to do that? with? Ha- so are we going to have two full-blown Batgirls at the same time? Good question. Good question. I mean, we have. At this point, I'm like, I don't give a shit. Just give me a Bat Family. Goddamn. <laughs> I've waited 30 years to see Robin again. Yeah. Christ. Come on. Um, it'll be interesting to see where we go. That's a good point, Roxy. Would we see two two Batgirls? I mean, we have two Batman. We have multiple Batman. We have uh, in Titans and everything. Yeah. Um, um, 
I I would like to see more villains that we haven't e- either seen in a while or ever seen. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Freeze would be cool. Um, I'm a big fan of Professor Pig, uh, and he's never made. He I think he was on Gotham. He's he's been on stuff, but he's not made the big screen leap yeah. yet. Yeah, he, he was. Gr- it was a great storyline on Gotham. Yeah, I like uh, Professor Pig is also a Grant Morrison creation, and I love Grant Morrison. So like I I think that'd be co- anyway. I'd like to see some. Maybe we bring Poison Ivy back. I feel like again, this felt so much like the traditional Batman comics that's like it feel, it feels like everything's an option um i wouldn't mind if down the line if we either created a new may, maybe this is like we wind down what has been labeled as the snyder verse and we wind up whatever we we kind of like take it a little bit slower we maybe introduce a new superman and then we kind of see where it all lines up but i again i feel like this is this feels like a batman that could exist in the same universe as the rest of those heroes um but Gosh dang, this was a chunky one. This is this was our thoughts on the Batman. This didn't even feel that long. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't as long as the movie. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, um, Adam, before we go, uh, remind the kids at home where they can find you uh, and what they should be looking out for from you. Uh, all my social media is just my name, Adam Hlavik. I'm boring like that, but it's the easiest way to find out where I am at all times. Just don't come looking for me, please. I'll uh, call the cops on you. Uh <laughs> But uh, I'm on Heroes Reforged on YouTube. We're doing reaction videos for brand new trailers, brand new shows. We are in the process of doing X-Men, the animated series on Patreon. And in just 20 some odd days, we'll be starting Moon Knight, which I'm very excited for. Ooh, gosh dang. Um, We'll see how that goes. When is that dropping? End of March. Yeah, end of March. So soon weeks away i'm like twitching yeah weeks that. away okay. yep yep um and of course we'll be, be covering that Please on be good. yeah we'll be, be good. <laughs> we'll see we'll see i like that they're incorporating mr knight uh we'll uh we'll be covering that on this show as well roxy where where can the people uh find you on the socials and what should they be looking out for everywhere at roxy stryer i didn't realize it was it was uh deemed boring to have your handle be your name that's what i've been told <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, then I'm in the boring club, I guess. I wish I could have been boring, but there's too many characters in my name. So, (laughs) Really? Even with just the DJ part? I think so. Yeah, I think that's the reason I didn't. But also, whatever. It doesn't matter. We don't need to get into that. (laughs) All right. Anyways, check all that out. You can find me at DJ Talks Trash. You can follow this show everywhere that matters at Only Stupid Answers, but on Twitter... Yank out the vowels from stupid. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, uh, Roxanne and I are going to be discussing Euphoria and the Tinder Swindler on what we're into over Patreon. If you want to watch stuff like this live, if you want to catch me and Sal discussing Venom, and we're going to be doing Far From Home soon, you can find that over at Patreon as well, patreon.com slash only stupid. Answers, check out Tim Watts comic, The Republic, um, over on Kickstarter. And thank you all uh, for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.